What's up, everybody? Mr. Klein here uh, with a presentation today over checks and balances. So we've been talking a lot about what's been going on as far as the government and the Constitutional Convention and how we separated those powers into three branches. And now we need to talk about how do they check one another? What I mean check is how do they make sure that one uh, branch of government does not have too much power over everyone else? And so what we're going to learn about today is how do those branches of government check one another to make sure that those branches do not get too powerful? And so when we talk about the seven principles of the Constitution, separation of powers and checks and balances are pretty essential to make sure that the federal government stays in a way that we have three branches, not just one. So we're going to talk about each of those branches, kind of talk about how they do those things um, from there. So the first one that we're going to talk about is going to be the legislative branch. Um, you will notice as we go through here that the legislative branch has a lot of checks against the other branches. Um, the reason why you see that is because Congress is made up of a lot more people than just the judicial branch and the executive branch. And so that's one of the big things that you need to think about is that there's the first thing that they created when they went to the Constitutional Convention. So you're going to see a lot of those powers uh, residing with the legislative branch. So let's talk about how they do those things. The first one is that they both check each other. Okay, the legislative branch actually checks itself through the House of Representatives and the Senate. So how do they do that? So think about when a bill has to become a law. It has to pass both houses of Congress. So the House of Representatives might have a bill and it might pass the House, but then it has to go over to the Senate and the Senate has to approve that bill as well. If that bill is passed in the Senate, then it becomes a law. However, if the Senate decides they don't like that bill, there's a couple of things they can do. They can decide not to vote on it or they can change the bill in a way that they feel like they can pass it. But then it has to go back to the House of Representatives, and now they have to approve that changed bill. So this allows the uh, legislative branch to not uh, one house be too powerful than the other. And so this is why, if you notice a lot of times in, in uh, politics and things like that, you see what we call a log jam, which means a lot of stuff gets backed up in Congress because we take a while for those things to pass because they might have similar bills. Then they have to like put them together and, and it takes a while process for those things to pass. And so that's one way that we have a checks and balances within the brain to sell, which is pretty important for Congress. The other one we have is what we call the power of the purse. And now when I was talking about like grandma's purse, that has all like the Werther's originals in there and you can get them out and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about money. All right. That's the big thing here is that Congress has the power of the money. So Congress decides where the money goes for the government. So we're taxed. Those taxes get brought in and the Congress is the one that decides how we uh, spend that money. So they have a budget that they have to go through and they allocate or they give certain uh, things of money to different things like military or maybe healthcare or, uh, you know, education. It all depends on what they want to do with that infrastructure, like buildings and roads and things like that. But Congress has that um, power. That's going to be a big thing here when we talk about the executive branch and how there's executive actions that, the president can take, but Congress decides if they're going to give that money to that group or not. So that's a big thing that they have. So if the president wants something, Congress has to give them the money for that. Congress is also the only branch that can declare war. The president cannot declare war. That's an important thing to know uh, there. That's a check. That way it's not just one person making that decision to go to war. Now, the president can decide that he needs a certain amount of troops somewhere. Like you think about like Afghanistan or we go even further back, like Vietnam or, or Korea. Um, they can decide they have a certain amount of troops that they can send there. But to declare war, it has to be Congress. The last time we declared war was during World War II. So think about all the things that have happened since then. 
Congress has not declared war. That's all been presidential actions. So that's the key thing to remember is that Congress, the way they check the executive branches, that they're the ones that declare war, not the president. Senate approval is a very, very important check that the legislative branch has. And what that means is that any appointments that the president makes, whether that is the Supreme Court, whether that's federal courts, whether that is members of his cabinet, so if he uh, appoints someone as Secretary of State, the Senate must approve those appointments. So the Senate has that power. So he has they have to be the ones that approve those things. So we'll have this big trial and or hearing and they'll talk to him, ask him all these things, kind of give him a lot of questions. And then the Senate decides, okay, we'll allow them to be your Supreme Court justice or ambassador or cabinet member um, there. But the Senate checks the executive branch by approving those appointments made by the president. Also, any treaties that the executive branch creates. So like if the president goes to uh, Germany and he decides that they want to do a treaty where um, they get their troops out of a certain place, it could be signed, but then it must go to the Senate for them to approve that treaty. So that way, the executive branch doesn't have too much power and just go do whatever they want to. It has to be checked by the legislative branch. So that's another big one. Um, one of the other ways that Congress can check the judicial branch is that if the judicial branch deems a law to be unconstitutional, then Congress can pass an amendment to the Constitution that makes that law constitutional, which sounds really confusing what I'm saying. But what that means is that Congress can change the Constitution, and uh, we'll talk about this later on, but they can change the Constitution to where the laws they want passed can now be uh, constitutional. And so that's one way that they can check the judicial branch is passing an amendment and changing the Constitution. Um, there's a 27 amendments in the Constitution right now. So those changes have happened before that changes those decisions that the Supreme Court has made. So that is uh, one way that they can approve or check the judicial branch. The other power that the legislative branch has is the power of impeachment. Impeachment is a very important component to the checks and balances in our government. So Congress can decide to remove or impeach a president or a justice or a person that runs in the Supreme Court or federal courts if they deem it to be inappropriate to their office. And so we've seen that recently with Donald Trump. He's been impeached twice, um, dealing with his uh, they're saying it's uh, things that are unbecoming of the president, right? We saw Bill Clinton that was impeached as well in the most recent history that we've had. But impeachment is a very important thing. Um, this is the way to check. It's like the ultimate authority over the executive branch and the judicial branch. And the reason why the Congress has that is because they can uh, have the power of the people behind them, right? People vote for them. They are the huge scope of the United States, not just the president or even the Supreme Court. And so Congress has that power to impeach or remove presidents and justices from their offices. Okay. And then the very last power or check that uh, Congress has over the executive branch is the uh, power to override a veto, which we'll talk about a little bit on the next slide. Um, but if a president vetoes a law, it goes back to the legislative branch and then it must pass two thirds majority in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. If both of those are passed, the law is passed by two thirds majority in both, then it still becomes a law. So that's the final check against uh, the executive branch. That way they just can't just veto everything and uh, not let any laws pass. This is that last little uh, check against the executive branch there. So you see, the legislative branch has a lot of checks against the other branches. Um, that just shows the emphasis of how important the Congress is to the federal government. You know, a lot of times people are just like, you know, really get upset with presidents and things like that, about laws and things like that. But it's Congress that really does a lot of the work in the federal government when it comes to passing laws and things like that. So that's why they have a lot of the, the powers there. All right. 
So let's move on to the executive branch. So what powers does the executive branch have over the other two branches in our government? The first one is that the president is the commander in chief of the military. And so what that means is that he is the end all be all to the the military. So any any commands that, the, that he has, the military must abide by. However, remember, Congress is the one that declares war. So we talked about that earlier. So the president is the commander in chief, but he cannot declare war. Uh, that's a check against the executive branch um, uh, there. So that's very important uh, for that. The president can appoint justice to the judicial branch. So that's one of the checks it has over the uh, judicial branch is that the president appoints justices to Supreme Court and to the federal court. And um, that's a, a big thing, especially with Supreme Courts. Um, that's a life term. So um, that's why it's very important for the president to be able to pick someone that's important there. But then also remember, it has to be checked by the Senate for approval. So you can see how these are all kind of coincide with each other um, there. The president also nominates federal officials. So anyone that works in the federal government that is not part of the branches, the president has to nominate those people um, there. The big one that the president has over the legislative branch is the power of the veto. So any law passed by Congress must be approved by the president. So that's a key thing to remember with the executive branch. So the power it has over the main power it has over the legislative branch is that it has to pass the law pass has to go to the president. So what happens if the House of Representatives and the Senate pass a bill in the law, it comes to the president's desk. It sits down there and the president can decide whether he wants to approve it or not approve it. And so that's a key thing to remember there. So if the president does not approve, approve it, then they can veto the law, which means it will not go into effect. Right. So that means it, it does not become law. But remember, it goes back to Congress. And if Congress decides by two thirds majority in the House representatives and the Senate, then it becomes a law. But if they don't have that majority, then that law does not exist anymore. That's to make sure that Congress does not just make wild laws um, that um, do not help the American people. And so that's kind of the president's main power over the uh, legislative branch there. One of the big things and powers that the president does have is executive actions. And so what that means is that the president can create laws without the approval of Congress. And so that's a big thing that um, is important to understand. So executive actions, for example, when President Obama was in office, he created the Affordable Care Act. Um, and he signed an executive order or executive action that put that into place. Uh, that's a big thing uh, for presidents. Um, more recently, we think about President Biden with the uh, pandemic going on. He's signing a, a law allowing all these uh uh, COVID test kits and masks being available um, immediately, that's an executive action. So that does not have to be approved by Congress. However, if you remember from the, the checks for the Congress, they have the power of the purse, right? So how they fund it is up to Congress. So that's an important thing to remember as well, is that even though they have executive actions, it costs money, Congress has to decide how much money they want to give um, to those things there. Okay, so that's kind of the big things for the executive branch. So once again, you notice the further we get through here, the less powers and checks we have over one another. Congress is kind of the main one there. The judicial branch, their main job is to think about constitutionality or is this law go with the Constitution or not go with the Constitution? Um, so when laws are passed, uh, they have to go to uh, the judicial branch to decide whether or not that law is constitutional or not. And how that happens is if uh, people sue um, the government over the law, it gets picked up by the Supreme Court or by the federal courts. Um, so that's a key thing to remember here is that there's a hierarchy or like a, um, you ever play like um, a video game where you have like little bitty bosses and then you get higher, 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 and then you get to the big boss there. Supreme Court's at the top, but there's all these other federal courts at the bottom. So these federal courts are the first kind of gatekeepers to decide 
if the law that was been passed either by the president or by Congress is constitutional. So they look through the Constitution to make sure that this uh, agrees with the Constitution because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. There's no laws above the Constitution. Um, and so to make sure that that happens, the judicial branch is there to do that. What we call this thing is called judicial review. So the judicial branch reviews these laws to make sure that they work. Sorry about that. And um, this is a big part of it. You can appeal the federal court's decision all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court can decide whether they want to uh, hear the case or they can decide uh, the decision that they made in those other courts is fine. You can go with that one. And so that's the main job of the judicial branch. Um, so any laws created by the legislative branch or the executive branch can be brought to the judicial branch and they decide if it goes with the Constitution or goes against it. Um, now, this can be all the laws, the whole law, or it can be parts of the law. Um, one of the big ones most recently that just happened was uh, President Biden's mandate for vaccinations for businesses over 100 people. Um, the Supreme Court decided that that was unconstitutional. So that did not uh, does not exist, but the one for healthcare does stay. So that's kind of an example of what we see with a whole of parts of a law um, there. So making sure that things are uh, a okay or thumbs up with the Constitution is an important thing there. All right, so there you have it. Those are checks and balances between the three branches of government. So remember. Congress has a lot of the, the checks over um, a lot of the other branches, um, but the executive branch does have the power of the veto against Congress, um, and the judicial branch does have the power of uh, declaring laws unconstitutional from Congress. Uh, but those are the kind of the checks and balances that we see throughout our government. All right, guys, hope this helped you out. Hope you learned a little bit about those three branches and how they check one another. I'll see you all later.